Now let's take a look at malt selection. Keep your malt selection simple at first and then branch out when you gain more experience. What specific beer style do you intend on brewing? You want to pick a specific beer style and understand what it means to make that beer style. I like to keep my malt selection simple and I give that guidance as well. Look at the color complexity. What are you trying to achieve within your color complexity of that beer? Keep it simple. If you're making straw to blonde looking beers, you don't want to have more robust or darker hops. Look at clone recipes and programs like Beersmith to give you jump off points to get your first couple batches underway and then make those beers your own by changing those batches and changing the ingredients slightly. Work from a strong base malt. If you don't understand what base malt is, do a little bit more homework and look online or look at your local library for books or talk to other brewers within your area to find out what base malt means. The base malt is the backbone of the beer. That's where you're gonna get most of your complexity and your available fermentable sugars. After you understand base malt, you wanna look at your specialty malts. What makes a specialty malt special? It's the roasting from the maltsters and then you start integrating in those specialty malts to get your recipes down in more specifically. When it comes to all grain brewing, whether you're a seasoned vet and a professional at it, or you're a home brewer who switched over from extract, rely on your homebrew shops again or online resources for proper milling. Your milling properly is very important. Look into sieve testing and understand what sieve testing means. Sieve testing is simply several different gradients of screens in a container that you're putting some of your milled malt in and you're shaking it back and forth at a given distance for a given time. Within that, it's gonna set up your particulate matter in almost flour, very fine material, all the way up to medium material, coarse, and then heavy coarse. And then you're gonna take measurements of that and to understand how your mill is actually operating or whoever milled your malt for you, how they milled it at the homebrew shop or wherever you're getting your malt from. Milling properly allows for proper brew house efficiency and recipe design. What milling properly does, it creates proper enzymatic activity and allows your fermentable sugars to come through. Once your malt is milled and possibly you've done a sieve test, don't store your milled malt for too long. Don't store your milled malt in an area that's too wet or damp, too hot or dry, an area that maybe is susceptible to rodents or mold and mildew. You want to use that malt immediately upon milling. You may store it briefly for maybe up to 48 hours, but the fresher the malt is milled, you want to make fresh beer, so utilize your malt as soon as possible.